Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in the Super Ultimate Guide to Design Systems. In this video, we're going to learn about atoms, global atoms, local atoms, components, patterns. Right? This is the most foundational, fundamental concept that you need to understand before constructing the design system or else you're going to make a big mess when you make it and it's going to defeat all the purpose of making a design system. So we're going to dive very much detailed into it. I'm going to give you really good examples. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, before I show you what I have in Figma, I want to show you something over here. If you go online and you search for design system diagram, you're going to see a bunch of things, right? And let's look at a couple of them. I'm going to click on the first one. And as you can see, you have something that it looks super, you know, overwhelming and super complicated. And, you know, you don't really know what is what. It feels very complicated and advanced, right? But it doesn't really have to be that. Because all we have to do is follow a logical approach rather than following to theories that exist online, right? Follow simple logic, follow simple common sense, and you're good to go. Right. Uh, if you look over here, we have atoms, molecules, organisms, templates and pages. Right. I came up with a new term called as patterns and I'm going to explain what that is. Right. But here again, we have five levels. If I come down, here is another one, which is basically six levels. You have subatomic and then atoms and then molecules, organism, templates and pages. You have six levels. This sort of feels like a formula or a theory. And honestly, this is not how product design is supposed to be learned. It's not supposed to be done with a theoretical approach. So. With that being said, let's jump into Figma. So I'm going to zoom in over here and we're going to look at this section. Now, the reason I've selected these things because I want to look at this profile picture in avatar component. Right? Now, let's see how we would actually set up the hierarchy and structure, right? So here I have, um, I've just, I'm going to go ahead and create this hierarchy chart uh, where I've gone ahead and created this um, uh, shape uh, auto layout. I've called it a component and this is a card. Now, of course, we know that this entire card, as you can see over here, is a component. We we definitely know that there is no question about that, right? So we've gone ahead and called it a card and we're going to focus only on this particular um, section over here. So we're going to make a duplicate and I'm going to shrink this down a bit, all right? And here, I'm going to just call it no name for now. We're going to go ahead and name what these are later, right? Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and change it to no name. And here I'm going to call this avatar. Okay. Now this avatar, all right, if I come down over here, I can break that into, you know, two more items. All right. So this avatar component, um, basically consists of a profile picture and it has a badge. All right. All right. And this badge, actually has an icon component as well, right? Now I'm using the word component over here. Do not mistake me. Maybe I'm just going to use the word um, element or item for now, right? So for now we have only established that the card is a component and everything else we don't really know what it is, okay? And so here I'm going to make a duplicate of this and I'm going to shrink this and I'm going to call this icon. So we have the icon, which is the lowest level. The icon sits inside uh, along with this background with this, you know, uh, shadow and then this color and all of that. And we call this one a badge and we combine the badge with this profile picture over here and that we get as the avatar and then the avatar sits in the card. And of course we have all of these other elements as well. So at the same level as the avatar, we're going to add this text layer. We're going to add the statistics and everything, right? But for now, I'm just looking at the avatar. So this is the structure that we have. Now, all of this, what is a pattern, what is a component, and what is an atom? Now, to keep things really simple, the lowest level is obviously going to be called as the atom. We know that anything, there can't, there can't be anything smaller than an atom. So we're going to go ahead and we'll go ahead and call this atom. Okay. I'm also going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a color so we can differentiate things a little bit more. I'm going to go back uh, and then just maybe choose a different color. Now, what about the profile picture and what about the badge? Now, there are a couple of things that we have to look at. Let's look at the profile picture first. Now, the profile picture is just a circle with an image, right? It's not using anything else. That is the base, right? It's just an image. That's it. It's just one layer. It's just one element, right? So we could go ahead and call that an atom, right? It's going to go ahead and copy all these values, co copy and then paste. I'm using uh, option command C and option command V that is control option, control um, alt C, control alt V to copy paste. So here we have an atom, which is basically the icon. Here we have an item, which is called as the profile picture. Now, what about this badge, right? 
Now here we know that this badge is being used in another bigger one called as the avatar. Okay. Here also you can see it's the avatar component, but it's a smaller size, right? Here you can see the avatar component, but there is no badge that is being used. It's just the avatar component without the badge. All right. So what I'm trying to say is that this is not really using this, right? It is using this. Now, the reason we can't use this is because when we're creating both of these items, when we're creating this list item and when we're creating this card component, we have to use the same item and the same item is this avatar component. This is going to be the avatar component with the badge and this is going to be the avatar component without the badge. It is using the same thing. We cannot use a profile picture for this one and we cannot use an avatar for this one. It doesn't work that way. If we have the avatar component, we must use the avatar component for this as well. All right. Now, what about the badge? Now we can see here that this badge is being used in the avatar component, but it's also being used here in the card as a standalone item. This badge is being used separately. Now the moment an element has an atom, it automatically becomes a component. So when I come here, I'm going to call this component, all right? And here I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to just copy this and then here, just come here and change the color to something that I like, all right? Now here, of course, because we have an atom and we have a component, I'm going to combine an atom and a component, all right? And I'm going to make this a component. And I'm going to go ahead and make this also a component. So here we have three atoms. Sorry, here we have three components. The avatar component has a, is a combination of a badge, is a combination of a component and an atom. And the badge, which is a component, has one atom inside. So the lowest level always has to be an atom. Now let's create a, re recreate another one, right? If I were to recreate this one, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate all of this. Okay. So here, uh, this one, right? We're going to call this the uh, title component. So this is a title. This is going to be our H2 title. Obviously we're going to design that when we come to that part, right? And in the title component, you basically have one text element and then you have the avatar, which is a component. Now under the avatar, again, you have the profile picture, you have a badge and the badge has an icon or actually the way we would construct it is we would remove the badge and we would just put the icon over here, right? Now, here's the special thing. Now, this icon is very different from our regular icons. You know, this icon is very different from this, is very different from this, right? Because it has a gradient, it has an outer stroke, it's a different icon. And in the entire app, this is the only super host icon. This icon is called the super host icon element that you see over here with the outer stroke and this gradient is being used only over here. It's not being used anywhere else. So technically, this is not really an icon, right? For now, I'm going to go ahead and call this icon badge, for example, right? I don't really know what the proper name is, but I'm going ahead and going to go ahead and call this icon badge. And this is going to be called a local atom, right? I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this to be purple, so, uh, right. Now, what does a local atom mean? Local atom means that this atom is the lowest level, right? It's just the icon with some effects, right? It can't go below that. You can't go below that. It's being used only in the avatar component. It's not being used anywhere else, which means a local atom is an atom that is defined and restricted to be used for only one single component and the avatar. You're not going to see this atom on any other element or any other component in the entire app. And there are going to be instances like that. I'm going to give you another example in just a bit. So here we have the avatar. We have the profile picture as well, which is the atom. We also have a local atom. Now, what that means is that this becomes a global atom. Because this profile picture is being used here in the title component, this profile, this global atom, I'm going to type global over here, is being used here in the card component as well, 
right the i the atom is being used in two different com components all together right which means this icon is also going to be a global atom but this icon badge is restricted only to the avatar component it's not going to be used anywhere else and i have checked the app so i know that right and i can give you a couple more examples for example this element that you see over here is a local atom of this entire card or carousel that you see over here this item component or atom in this case is not being used anywhere else it is used only on this app to give you more a different example right here we have this player right we have this uh, you know th these you know pagination sliders you have icon over here this entire player component or in this case an atom is a local atom to this card it's not being used this entire small tiny component is not being used anywhere else it's being used only for this component and hence it becomes a local atom now in this case this icon obviously is a global atom because icons are being used everywhere else on across the app across so many other components right so it's being it's so it's so it has a global usage but combining all of this the sliders all of this to come together the the element that we get is a local atom because it is local to this entire one component you will not see this player component being used anywhere else if you are seeing this player atom being used anywhere else then this becomes a global atom and it no longer becomes a local atom i hope that is very clear let's take another example right um let's come over here i'm going to grab this one okay and i'm going to copy all of this uh, i'm going to duplicate this over here okay here this is a list item component i'm say list item now under that we have two things we have an avatar and we also have a label or a text i'm just going to call it text layer now here text elements are 99% of the times not really atoms or components right they are just text layers right i'm just going to call this text layers right now there is a 1% use case where we go ahead and make it into an atom now obviously where that is i'm going to explain that much later but 99% of the times just plain text layers are not going to be atoms or components right which means i'm going to go ahead and just remove the color all right this is how it is and in the avatar we have obviously the profile picture and we won't have this right now before the avatar over here had a profile picture and a badge as you can see it had a profile picture and a badge but in this case the avatar component just has the profile picture right and if we come over here we're going to take the last one and then we're going to go ahead and uh maybe copy this bring that over here okay so let's see so here we have a card this is another card here uh we basically have a badge right now this is not the icon badge right the icon badge is basically the super host we want the normal badge right we'll copy this badge come over here and paste it so the badge is a component all right and then i'm going to delete this and uh, we then just have um two text layers right so we have you know one text layer over here and then underneath that we have another one so this is going to be called you know text 1 and this is going to be called text 2 right so put this together uh this is how the hierarchy is going to be right and as you can see we are following the rules so let's understand what the rules are right the first one over here the lowest level is an atom and it's a global atom it can be a local atom as well because in this case we are using a combination of a global atom and a local atom we're combining all of that and then over here we have the list item we can see the lowest level is also a global atom in this case when i see the badge obviously we need the icon copy that come back over here because the badge obviously consists of the icon so the lowest level always has an atom it's either a global or a local and then the moment we go a level up it becomes a component and it can be accompanied with just text layers or it can be accompanied over here uh, as you can see over here with another atom right so that's possible and then the topmost level is obviously called a component right 
So this is how you need to look at design systems and understand how to structure things. Here we didn't look at subatomic and molecules and you know templates. We didn't look at all of that. This is such a simple concept. Global atom, local atom, component, right? And we're defining rules over here. So when you're creating components and complex components, you have to keep the structure in mind and this has to follow across every single element or every single component you make. Let's take an example here again, right? So I'm going to be really quick, right? Because we don't want to waste too much time. Come down over here. Okay. Let's look at this list item, right? So obviously we're going to go ahead and call this list item. Here we have um, a text element. So we're going to go ahead and call this text, uh, right? We have two text elements. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, change this to one C one C one E. All right. And call this text. I'm not going to do it for all the elements. I'm just going to do on this one, other one. What about this? This is a switch, right? Now we know that the lowest level either has to be a text element or it has to be an atom. Now, obviously text elements are not going to be atoms. So which means we need to bring in this switch over here and combine it as a global atom and call this switch. Now there is a good chance that we'll be using switches in multiple other components. But in this case, let's assume that we're going to use the switch only in the list item component and nowhere else. In that case, this ends up becoming a local atom. And uh, I can go ahead and quickly grab the color here as well. So I'll copy this, paste over here, right? So we have a main component. Under that, we have two text layers. And the lowest level, obviously, is this, which is this. We have an atom, which can either be a global atom or a local atom. And in this case, it's a local atom because we're going to assume that in this case, this switch, I, this switch icon or whatever this is, is going to be used only in the list item. Right now, I'm not going to do the same thing for others, uh, but we're just going to look over here. This one here, we're going to create this as the icon button. The icon button has an icon. So the icon button is a component which has an icon atom and it's part of the whole search input component. Here is the icon button, which is being used in the navigation bar. And this icon button is a component with the icon atom. You know, and the same thing over here. Of course, we have multiple states. So here we have, you know, it's a flat surface. And here we have, you know, like an elevated surface. We have multiple states, but that does not affect the hierarchy. All right. Coming over here. Here is that 1% exception that I told you about. Here, as you can see, again, we have that card. Okay. And maybe I'm going to bring this down. Uh, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to bring this down over here. Here we have the card. Under that, we have the avatar. Okay. And under the avatar, we have the profile picture. Now here we don't have a badge. So I'm going to remove this. Um, we have two text layers, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just shrink this up. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a text layer. So here we have a text layer. So I'm going to maybe move all of this over a little bit over to the side and maybe make a duplicate so that we can see things a bit more clear. Okay. And we also have another text layer, right? So maybe I'm going to make this a little bit bigger and come out here. Now you might think that this is correct, but in fact, it's not. Let me explain why. If you look at the same component here, this is exactly the same thing. It's just that we don't have these statistics. It's the exact same thing. We don't have a badge, right? And we have the same text layer and you can see the shadows, the size, everything is the same, right? It's a different variant. But here you can see it says superhost with an icon and here it says guest without an icon. So basically what's happening here is we are now, because we know that this actual text element can have an icon as well, we need to make this text an actual atom. So what that basically means is going to come over here and here in the text, all right. We obviously have one level text over here. For the other level, we're going to go ahead and call it the label component, or in this case, the label atom. So now the label atom, I know for a fact that we are going to be using this piece in so many other places across the app, right? Because it's a very, it's quite common to see this over here, right? So I'm come over here and call this label, and I'm going to call this a global atom. Oops. Call it global atom. I'm going to copy this. 
and paste. Now I know what you might be wondering. Now you might be wondering that this now because this label has a text and an icon, right? So if we were to go ahead and break this a bit more, we would bring down a text layer over here. This would be a text, all right? And we would also uh, come over here and make a duplicate of this. And here we would go ahead and call this icon, right? Now you might say, hey, Chetan, isn't this how it's supposed to be? The label consists of a text and it consists of an icon. So how can a global atom be a part of another global atom? Shouldn't we call this actually a component and uh, apply the same color as this because, you know, um, isn't a component has to have a global atom. How can we have, you know, how can we have this state, you know, this state where we have one global atom inside another global atom logically doesn't make sense. So what that means is we have two approaches over here. We can either follow this approach, all right, and maybe just going to create a, uh, you know, frame around this, all right. Maybe reduce the opacity of, uh, opacity a bit. Maybe we can follow this approach where we can have a global atom inside another global atom, right? We can have that, all right? Or we can have another approach where we go ahead and make this a component and then we have this to be a global atom. Both of these are still fine. Now, if you understand this logic yourself and you don't get confused, you can follow either of these two approaches. But again, like I said, you have to follow the same approach for every component. So what that means is when we were creating this one, right? Uh, this entire component, if I come over here and, you know, bring this down over here, here, we could have made this badge a global atom as well. and made sure that the icon was a part of the badge. All right. And then two atoms combined, we make it a component. We could have followed this approach or we could have followed this approach where this becomes a component, right? So um, either this approach or this approach, right? Now here again is the question. You have to follow the same approach everywhere. If you're going with this approach where you don't mind combining the tiniest of the tiniest elements and combining them into an atom, or you only want to have one level of atoms, you can follow this approach, right? I would suggest you to go back and watch this again if you didn't really get it. Basically, to sum up what I'm trying to say is that both of these approaches are correct, but pick one and make sure you apply that same approach throughout all the other elements. Now, does that mean that you can also call this a global atom? This is definitely not, right? You don't want to have too many levels of atoms, right? So you, you want to have a maximum of two levels and then the third level and the fourth level and the fifth level, all of them have to be components. Try to follow that approach, right? If you want to make things simple, keep it like this, have this, follow this approach where um, you have only one level of atom, which is the base. And then on top of that, you must have a component. And then on top of that, you need to have a component and then you need to have a component on top. Now, should this be a component? This definitely cannot be a component because it is just one piece. It's just one layer, right? Here, a badge has an additional element inside, right? It has an icon inside, right? But this profile picture is just going to be a piece. Of, it's just going to be one single layer. Right, so this has to be a global atom, right? Of course, you can combine the component and the global atom together to make another component, right? But the lowest level always has to be an atom and you can have another level um, like this where you have two levels of global atoms together and then the third layer is a component and the fourth layer is also a component. So basically, you have two options. So I'm summing up, summing it up again. You have two options. You can either follow this approach or you can follow this approach, but make sure whichever approach you pick, you apply that everywhere else. Uh, let's quickly look at the other ones. Um, here we have this tag, right? Which it says show preview. Here it says pending. Here it says superhost. Now this is a global atom 
because this is being used in multiple places. You can see this is a different card component. This is a different card component and this itself is a different card component. When you're using this tag item in multiple components, this becomes a global atom. And here also you can see this new, this becomes a label, right? This obviously becomes a label because this is being combined over here with this, all right? Um, what else down over here? We already looked at this, which is a local atom. This is also a local atom, right? Now, coming down here to patterns. What does patterns mean? Now, pattern is obviously a particular screen that is going to be reused across the entire app. These are non-core screens. They are not the main screens of the app. These are very supplementary and additional screens. They're going to be used in multiple flows and the content will not change that much, right? For example, if we look at this particular screen, this is a huge screen. It probably has like 15 components and tons of permutation combinations, right? Here as well, this can have tons of combinations and this is an entire tab itself, right? Insights is a tab, right? There can be too much information over here, right? So this can't be a pattern. But stuff like this, right, where this screen can be used in multiple different types of flows, right? And the content here is not going to change. It's very static, right? If you change it over here, it's going to change in every other flow that you have used it in, right? So this becomes a pattern. Same here for cancellation policy, right? Every listing has a cancellation policy. Now the title is going to be the same. The description is going to be the same. Now what might change here are these items, right? Here you have before 48 hours, before June 18th, and then no refund. Some properties may have just no refund, like you don't even get the option for a refund. It just says if once you've paid, you don't get any refund, right? So that's another edge case or that's another use case, right? But it's the exact same screen and here we're just removing two list items and just gonna have this one list item, right? So 90% of the screen is not being changed. It's just the exact same screen, but with a slight variation, right? So that's why this becomes a pattern. Here we have a loading state. Of course, we have this animation that's gonna be the same. The logo is gonna be the same. It's just the text that we are going to change, right? So here we can see your, your trip is getting ready. We are canceling, pending, whatever it is. This, is. this can be considered a pattern, right? And when engineers are building this, they are going to build this screen as a pattern. So every time they are preparing a user flow, they're not going to reconstruct the screen from scratch. They're going to take the pattern that they've already made and paste it in their code base and just change the text. They're not going to define the padding again. They're not going to define the icon size again. They're not going to define the Lottie animation again. They're not going to do any of that. They're just going to copy that, paste over here, and they're just going to change the text, right? So that's why we want to make it a pattern so that it becomes easiest for engineers as well to build it. Here, help us improve. This text most likely will never change. And even if it changes, it's going to be the same text on every other screen that is being used, right? When you say help us improve, maybe this is coming from the help center. Maybe this is coming from the reporter listing. Maybe this is coming from, I don't know, any other place, right? But this screen is exactly going to be the same. Here, we have reservation canceled and we have reservation pending. As you can see, this screen is a 99% match, right? It's just that in the cancellation screen, we have four list items. In pending, we have two list items, right? And of course, the dates will obviously change. But apart from that, everything else is the exact same, right? So basically, what they could actually do is if I were to do this, right? I would make this into a component. I would make this also into a component. I would combine these two as variants. And I'm going to call this probably called status screens. And this is going to be called canceled. Uh, and then this is going to be called pending, right? So now when I'm designing a user flow, I'm going to make a duplicate of this pattern and uh, I'm going to go ahead and I don't want the cancel state. I want the pending state. So I'm going to come over here and change it to pending. And of course, this is an image, but ideally this will not be an image. This will be a list of components. And I would go ahead and then change. I would just change the information over here, right? Um, if I were to create another case where I would have a cancel state, um, all of these four list items are going to be as it is. I will never change this, right? So 90% of the screen is going to be the same. And it's just the small thing that I'm changing, right? So this is another way you can also construct patterns, right? A pattern doesn't have to be one screen. It can be a combination of screens combined as variants, right? Then over here, we have this web view, which is basically, you can see a PDF. So obviously this is going to be a pattern because, you know, every pattern, this a web view is going to be the same. And what's going to happen is the engineers are just going to change the URL or the actual PDF file. They're going to paste the actual pattern of this PDF pattern 
and then they're going to go ahead and just change the content inside. They're not going to reconstruct the screen, right? Over here again, this is the share sheet. When you're sharing something, you're going to see copy link, messages more. This screen is never going to change. Even if it changes, it's going to be the same across everything else. And of course, sharing is not a core screen. It's just an ordinary screen. So this can also be used, right? Maybe you're sharing a place. Maybe you're sharing an experience. Maybe you're sharing something else. This screen is going to be the same and it's going to be used in multiple places across the app in different flows, right? And like I said, when engineers are building this, they are not going to code the screen every time they're building a user flow. They're just going to take the pattern and then they're just going to paste it, right? Because somebody has made this pattern once, just the way you as a designer, when you are creating a user flow, you're not going to sit and construct the screen. Somebody would have already made this as a pattern. You're going to take an instance of the master pattern and then you're going to paste it in your user flow. You're not going to change anything else, right? Obviously, you're going to change the name and the image probably, but apart from that, you're not going to change anything else. And same thing for the engineers. They're going to take a copy of the master pattern that they made in their code base, paste it in their user flow, obviously change the text, maybe change the image and the rest will work. The interactions, the copy, the number of options, all of that will be the same, right? Of course, maybe there can be another option, maybe like WhatsApp, maybe they're doing some A-B tests, so they're going to add WhatsApp. But again, 90% of the screen is the same. So in that case, you want to go ahead and consider that to be a pattern, and right? Now, of course, not everything can be called a pattern. This cannot be called a pattern. You know, filters cannot be called a pattern because filters will have a lot of changing, right? And filters is, is pretty much, is, is one of the core screens, right? Um, all of this as well. Now, this can definitely also be considered a pattern to a certain ex extent because this screen, again, will pretty much never change, right? But then the screens after this, right? When I tap on something, when I'm, you know, searching for something, when I'm searching for a destination, when I'm searching for a place, when I'm searching for an experience, that flow is going to be different, but maybe this screen can be considered to be a pattern, but that's, again, a design choice that you can make, right? So that's everything you need to know about global atoms, local atoms, components, and patterns. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.